Good to see you, sir. Hey, um, Joe, you're obviously up at the podium, so your mic is uh, your mic is hot and your video is on. So, um, with for everybody here, media wise, obviously, uh, first uh, we're gonna be joined today by Panthers kicker Joey Sly. Um, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions once uh, hands go up. Please use the uh, raise hand function um, for us to be able to call on you. And then uh, as soon as that starts, we'll get started with our first questions uh, for Joey. So I'll give you guys a minute to do that, and then we'll get going. Joey, thanks for a couple seconds of patience here, and we'll uh, get started. No problem, man. I think we're all in here. If anyone needs recording uh, permissions and doesn't have it, just uh, shoot me a text or, or hit the chat below. Any questions for Joey Slots? Go ahead and put up those uh, hands, and we'll get started. Looks like um, Joe Person will be first. Joe, you can go Joey, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Can't see you, but I hope you're doing well too. Hey, um, what? Uh, it, first of all, could you answer a bet? How long was the last field goal you tried today? Sixty-three. And uh, looked like you hit it well. Just uh, it, it, not like it was a game situation. But how, how do you think, just in general, you've been hitting them this spring? Um, good. I mean, uh, the kick today I hit pretty pure. It was all uh, like three quarters up on the upright when I, when I hit the upright. So, um, had like a left or right wind, just trying to play, play through the wind. So, um, but no, I've been feeling really good. Um, getting a really good, uh, operation with both groups with JJ, Joe, um, Oscar and, and, uh, Thomas. So, uh, we've been just trying to build chemistry in that aspect, but, um, no, I feel, Real, feel really, really comfortable kicking, really confident kicking. So it's uh, been hitting some bombs recently. So, Hey, on the topic of, of the operation, Chase was talking today about how uh, Joe Charlton's holding has improved. Um, where, what, you know, could you have sort of explain that to the average fan or media member, like where that shows up and is beneficial for you? Uh, yeah. So, um, very very quickly explaining it instead of giving you guys like a two-hour conversation about where the hole needs to be and stuff like that um for me comfortability and in, in the confidence zone that the ball is going to be where it's supposed to be all the time um is big so that i can go in and just have free thought be able to swing as, as full as i can but um i mean if you if you miss the spot by a couple inches here and there uh, even a couple half inches here and there um it can really affect the ball um and where i I make contact with it. And so that's kind of what we've been focusing on, giving him an area where he can miss that I know that I can still make my kicks um, and just understanding those as well. So uh, he works with the same kicking coach that I work with, Dan. We've been able to get a lot of work in this off season. It's been a focal point for us, obviously, to build some confidence within our unit. Um, and I think the the more we continue to do that, the more success that we can have on the field. So it's it's been imperative for us to get it get it figured out but uh we've definitely taken huge strides uh in in figuring it out for sure all right we'll go to uh will Palachik from wfnz and then elena gets at the observer hey joey uh just uh kind of on the operation side of it you are working with somebody new at least in the rotation with thomas fletcher what's that battle between uh, him and jj jansen been like and, and what have you noticed from fletch um I, I mean, I, I'm not really looking at a battle aspect of it. Um, obviously, I know that they're competing in whatever um, kind of battle that they have going on. Um, but honestly, I've, I've tried to eliminate any understanding of like who's holding or who's snapping um, and just try to get into a situation where it's kind of like just me versus the ball. So um, I know that Obviously, going back and watching film, they both uh, – J.J. is a 13-year vet. There's a reason why he's a 13-year vet. He's, he's amazing at what he does. Um, and then Thomas, obviously, was was drafted because of his ability. So, um, both of them are going to have pluses and minuses. I can't get into it because I'm, I mean, I'm not a snapper. I can, I can look from afar and say they both snap well, but um, that's kind of a competition between them. Hey, Joey, um, I know we talk a lot about the mental side of things when, you know, and that's a huge part of kicking, but for you, you know, is there any part of that, you know, part of your game that you had to work on this off season, like your mindset or anything like that in particular? Uh, yeah, I kind of, I think I had an article released a couple of days ago, just talking about kind of the, the presence of, of youth as a sports psychologist this off season. Um, the one that we have um, through the team in uh, Dr. Joanne Perry. Um, Coach Rule offered it up as a suggestion last year to me, and um, a lot of times, uh, 
probably back when I was in college and even into high school, my old coach Paul Woodside would talk to me about trying to get into reading, which I'm not the biggest fan of reading, but um, he would also talk about trying to just get with some sports psychologists or at least look into it. And a lot of times I just kind of brush it off because uh, just I'm, I'm thinking I got to be mentally tough, but uh, understanding if you don't know what to do with your brain and you don't know how to, to quiet things, you can't really combat it. Um, the brain's a very complex muscle that is, is constantly working. So for me to, um, the, the phrase I use is if I can make my, my brain as strong as my body, then I feel like I could be successful because I take a lot of pride in working out and making sure that I'm ready to go for the game day. But uh, my mind has to be able to match my body in a lot of cases. So just doing a lot of work with her. We meet <clears throat> most of the time, twice a week. Um, about a, uh, an ample amount of things that, w that we need to talk about. But obviously part of it's been circling back to um, how I can get my mind to just quiet when I'm doing certain things. I got a very analytic mind. I'm, I'm constantly trying to think about certain things here and there. So for me to be able to know that I can think, but I just have to like know how to think correctly has is, is been important for me, so. And then I was curious like on, the understanding that offseason work like was there anything with the physical aspect of your game that like you really honed in on this off like in the time away that you think is improved and better yeah so um I have like knowledge of the weight room and, uh, and enough to make myself dangerous at certain points but um I got with a with a guy his name is uh Jordan Shallow uh D Dr. Jordan Shallow um, he's a guy out of Canada that uh, I just honestly DM'd one day. It was just like, I, I watched a lot of his videos. I listened to a lot of the stuff that he talked about, I listened to his podcast on a regular basis. And a lot of his stuff just kind of lined up to with what I would want to do post football and just kind of understand, like, I would love to kind of have that type of mentality going into things. So um, reached out to him. We got a program set up. And then through his some of his connections, uh, he's got a guy, uh, Phil Smith, out of Australia, who's a uh, sports nutritionist that I also work with. So um, just trying to build my team outside of football to just kind of understand like what's going to make me better, what can make my prolong my career in certain aspects. But then also these are friendships and, and relationships that I want to start now. So that obviously when, when football ends up being done for me, that these are people that I can hopefully work with in their fields um, when I'm done. So kind of a whole cumulative connection of, of certain things. But uh, yeah, that's kind of that's just some of the I've, I've really tried to be professional outside of just football and just kicking. So. Let's go to Jonathan Alexander. Hey, Jolie. Um, I'm curious, what, what type of things does the sports psychologist help you kind of sort through? And, and was there anything in particular that you found really interesting that you didn't really realize after talking with the sports psychologist? Yeah, like, um, I think we we put the label of sports psychologist on there because I, I don't know based off their field, but it's probably people that obviously work with athletes more often than not, where maybe a normal psychologist is constantly kind of working with, with common population people. And obviously <clears throat> they're gonna have an overlap of profession. I don't think that solidifies them in one little box that they can only deal with athletes. But um, I mean, part of it's been some of the off the field stuff. Sometimes I'm thinking about way too much off the field, um, about life, about lifting, about my relationships, like whatever it might be. Like sometimes that can cloud your mind. So where you're thinking about something, um, the, the biggest thing that I kind of took away from her is, uh, my, like I said, my old coach, Paul Woodside that I worked with since I was in high school, he was my old kicking coach, still, still talk to him on, um, a regular basis, but, um, he would always talk about just trying to like positive thoughts, try to quiet your brain in certain aspects. Um, but like really understanding that you can like get your mind to quiet while still thinking, like, I think is a huge takeaway from, from the stuff that I've been doing with Dr. Perry. Um, cause a lot of times you just try to say like, stop thinking about it, stop thinking about it. Like you're still thinking about it while you're saying stop thinking about it. So, um, just, just some of the, we use headspace app a lot. Um, I know the team helped us get that last year and that's been something that I love using to help me go to sleep or stuff like that. But, um, obviously the, the, we also do this, uh, biofeedback thing, um, for, for what I'm doing, my, my kicking and stuff. So it's just that earpiece Bluetooth thing that she can register your HRV, just, just your, your heart rate um, intervals or your heart rate variability and see like at what point, like does your body get out of like flow is what we're kind of looking at. And Coach Rule kind of tied this back in on our last off season and some of his meetings where he's talking about level four mastery of things. So it's like comp um, unconscious competence of a task. So that's kind of like the understanding of flow. If you can get into that, then you can kind of just master your craft and be able to do it without thinking. Um, and so having 
people like Joanne, um, having even people like Coach try to put you in that mindset of flow um, has, has really helped me just to quiet my mind when I'm kicking and understand trust, all that stuff in, into my into my form as, as well. So that was anything my else for Joey? Answer. No, you're good, Joey. Anything else for Joey? Yeah, I have one more question. I appreciate the answer. That was a really good, good answer. Um, so aside for that, on a similar topic, we were asking, I mean, not a similar topic, a different topic, but we were asking Matt Rule about how he approaches um, speaking to players about uh, vaccine. Um, do you all have conversations in the locker room about whether you all want to get the vaccine or how do, how do you all approach that as players? Um. I think the best way for us to really approach it is obviously to think about it as on a personal level. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing the, my St. Jude's hat, but my brother was out of St. Jude. Um, I know that's been well documented. And uh, I mean, I had my doubts at certain points about the vaccine and the virus and, and understanding just kind of how everything's transpired over the last year or so. But um, the doctors at St. Jude that, that my parents trusted and as well as myself trusted to try to save my brother's life are also the same ones that gave us information about um, about the virus. So uh, to be honest, when they gave me the, the, the AOK to say like, this is something that's okay for, for you guys to take and, and take care of. And it was kind of a no brainer for me to, to go ahead and get it. But um, I think you can have conversations with people about it. I think it's important to have conversations with people about it and be able to discuss in a very like relaxed way to, to get some people to just get at ease about what the virus is, what the vaccine may do. Um, but at the same time, I, I I think it's bad if we start forcing it upon people to get it um, without letting them make their own decisions for themselves. So um, there's some people that talk about it. I mean, um, like JJ is someone that I, I refer to a lot about information, whether it's about the virus, whether it's about finances, whether it's about family, whatever it is. He's a, he's a great guy to talk to. So um, even guys like that bouncing questions off guys that you know have a lot of, that do a lot of research, know a lot of information, just kind of talking to them and, and seeing what they think about things as well is important. But yeah, like I said, I wouldn't force it upon anyone, but um, I would recommend it. Um, but I also know people that wouldn't recommend it. So let's go to uh, Vincent Richardson. Hi, hi, Jerry. Um, I think when we spoke to Brian Burns last week, he mentioned about sort of you know having a sack number as kind of an aspiration for a season. I was wondering for for a kicker, are there particular numbers you look at about your own performance when when judging how you you do in a season, or is it more about how you feel about how how you played? Um, I think statistics obviously play a little bit of a role. Um, like if you're 50% on your field goals and you're probably not doing very well. And if you're hundred percent, you're probably doing really well. Um, I think they also can at lie at certain points. Like if someone's 80%, they're hitting a bunch of long field goals all the time. And if someone's 95%, but all their field goals are within 40 yards, it's a little bit of a, a, a difference in statistics, but, um, the best answer for that would be if I hit a lot of PATs and no field goals, then we're probably going to be really successful as a team. So I'm kind of going for that. So hopefully I, I make no field goals. I go 100% of my PATs and we hit a thousand of them. So that's kind of where I want to be at. But um, I mean, <clears throat> if I hit 14 field goals in the year and I go 14 for 14, that's going to help my team. And if I go seven for 14 during the season, that's not going to help my team. So um, any any way that I can go 100% while hitting the least amount of field goals would be the best situation. So hopefully that, that fits it. All right, looks like that's it for Joey. Joey, thank you for taking some time. Really appreciate it. No problem, Ryan. Appreciate you guys.